got two Raspberry Pi computers. This one over here on the left, which is connected to this breadboard with an infrared LED for transmitting data. And then this Raspberry Pi on the right, which has a breadboard here with an infrared receiver. Uh, and it's not just a, a infrared sensitive device. It's also got some circuit circuitry within the device itself, which receives only frequencies of 38 kilohertz. So you have to transmit 38 kilohertz from this LED in order to change the level of the output of here. So the output is held high, uh, and when you transmit 38 kilohertz, it pulls the level of this one down to uh, down to ground. So in order to transmit 38 kilohertz from this LED here, I've got a circuit here, which is just a simple 555 timer, and it's adjusted to be set at 38 kilohertz. Now that runs all the time at 38 kilohertz. Uh, and I've got a transistor in the circuit board here, and the Raspberry Pi GPI pin switches this transistor on or off. Uh, and when this transistor is switched on, it allows 38 kilohertz to get to this LED uh, and it transmits the 38 kilohertz it requires to, to uh, for this, this receiver to receive uh, a level change. So each Raspberry Pi only has three wires going from it to the breadboards. Uh, over here I'm using five volts. Uh, the reason I'm using five volts is that this 555 timer is powered from five volts. Uh, and the GPIO pin which comes over here to switch on or off this transistor um, is, is held high internally in the Raspberry Pi and all it does is it pulls the transistor the output of the transistor low whenever it wants 38 kilohertz to go through to the, uh, to the LED. And then over here on this side I'm using the 3.3 volts because this infrared detector can be run off 3.3 volts uh, and the output of that is held high uh, and the the actual device pulls the output low uh, and it goes onto this just the single GPIO pin over there. So there's not much to be seen in operation. Uh, both my Samsung phones have a, like an infrared filter on them on the cameras, so you can't see anything for that. So I'm using an old camcorder which I which I've got, uh, and you, if you look carefully, you can just see the uh, the infrared LED transmitting the data. So I've got both of the Raspberry Pis connected here. Uh, and on the top one, I'm going to use this for transmitting and the bottom one for receiving. If I look at the files, I've got a couple of uh, Python scripts, uh, one for receiving the uh, data and one for transmitting the data. Now these uh, source code is very similar to the 433 megahertz video which I did for, for the radio transmitters. Uh, there's very, very little difference. I've, I'm going to check it into the GitHub as well and then you can compare the two source codes and see that actually there's uh, there's not much difference between the two. So in the bottom window, I'll start the, um, the receiver, and that just sits there waiting for data. Uh, and in the top one, uh, the transmitter um, script just takes one argument, which is uh, a message that you want to send. And when I hit return, uh, it gets transmitted from the top one, and the bottom ones receive the message, and it's it's uh, printed out the message here. So this is the transmitting circuit and it's just a standard 555 timer oscillator uh, and it oscillates at 38 kilohertz. Uh, so the there's a variable resistor in here which you can adjust to get it to 38 kilohertz because it's got to be very very much on 38 kilohertz to, to oscillate in to actually transmit and, and receive uh, and then the 38 kilohertz comes around here into a transistor which the Raspberry Pi switches on and off. Uh, so that's how it gets its transmitting high and low levels. So high levels when it's transmitting uh, and the low levels when the LED is switched off and the infrared LED is just there. And then the receiving circuit is the VS1838B uh, and this is just uh, the circuit which is off of the data sheet. Uh, so the data sheet seems to suggest having a 100 ohm resistor on the power in line uh, and the output is pulled up through a 100k resistor uh, and then this is the resistor which I've just put in line with the GPIO pin just to protect the uh, Raspberry Pi and the, the device make sure there's not, not too much current flowing between the two. First I'll go through the, the transmitter source code. Uh, so as I said this is very similar, in fact um, there's not much difference at all with the 433 megahertz transmitter uh, code. So 
I define the argument, so it's just going to take one argument of uh, the message to be sent. I define the the uh, GPO pins which will be used. Uh, in this particular script, I'm only using the TX pin. Um, and then I just do some definitions of uh, periods. So I'm, although I'm not using this particular definition, I will try to use a 38 kilohertz generate 38 kilohertz within the source code uh, but Python on the Raspberry Pi isn't accurate enough to generate a consistent 38 kilohertz which can be used uh, so but I've just left that in there just as a placeholder uh, and it transmits on uh, a data rate of about 3 kilohertz uh, and then from the the other the, the code which I took this from which is a 433 megahertz I'm using a simple encryption uh, algorithm so it's only just as a demonstration so I've got the, the encryption key here uh, and also I'm sending it packets of data so I've got like a packet signature so I can recognize uh, if the packet's meant for the receiver or not and I'm just sending a signature of the packet how long the data is that I'm sending with message length the data and then a checksum at the end as well um, so this I've got a function which actually I've which is different. This is so this is one of the differences to the previous code. I've added a function for transmitting the level. So this is because I had I, an attempt at generating 38 kilohertz here, uh, but because that wasn't successful, it did it did receive it occasion the message properly occasionally, but it just it wasn't consistent at all. Uh, so I've just got um, a bit of code here which does the high or the low output level. So this is just switches the transistor on to allow the 38 kilohertz through from the 555 timer or switch off, switches it off for a level zero. And then um, for transmitting the byte, it just uh, sends send in a byte as a, an argument and it goes through each of the bits in the byte uh, and it will set the level. Uh, the way that it transmits, it doesn't transmit at zero um, for for binary zero and a one for binary one, it transmits a, a high level of or low level of a short pulse for a binary zero or a double pulse for pulse length for a binary one. Uh, that's because that's how the uh, transmitter seemed to work uh, for key fobs in my in the previous source code. So I've just left that in this source code as well. So it does it does the same transmitting. Uh, mechanism uh, for this as I did in the uh, in the 433 megahertz so just left that as it was and I've got a basic encryption routine uh, and it's the same for decrypting so you just call the same routine to, to decrypt so at the start of the program we just set, set up the GPO pins I put I get a data packet like the um, an empty data packet and populate it with all the, the data which I want to send uh, and put a checksum uh, in it, calculate a checksum for it. Uh, and let's say I'm sending the, uh, the, pa the, uh, the packet data packet uh, and it goes through just uh, calling transmit for each of the type uh, uh, types of thing which I'm sending. It goes through all of the, uh, the bytes of the signatures and transmits those uh, and transmits the, the length of the data and then it goes through each of the bytes of the data and transmits each byte of the data and then at the end it transmits the checksum value uh, and then at the very end it switches off make sure that the however the GPO pin has been left it makes sure it's switched off so it goes into a um, so the LED uh, infrared LED is always switched off at the end and it just goes uh, to steep for a, a period which is the end of uh, transmission period uh, then the receiving code, um, so it just imports whatever libraries it requires. It does very, it's very similar to transmitting code, so I, um, it, the definitions are basically the same at the top for defining which GPO pin is going to use, um, defining uh, levels uh, and periods in there for the transmitting and receiving. Um, the encryption code uh, key and the packet signature well the packet signature has to be the same and so does the encryption key i've uh, got the same encryption routine there for doing the decryption set up the gpo pins exactly the same uh, and then i initialize an empty data packet because um 
it's going to be receiving data into here, so it just needs an empty data packet at first. It writes on the screen it's waiting for data. Uh, and it goes into an infinite loop, so every time, each time it receives data and it displays on the screen, it waits then for the next lot of data. So you can just keep, keep transmitting to it. Uh, and it does that by... It, 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 um, between IO, IO uh, changes in level, it, it times how long it, how long the period is, uh, and if the period is one length long, uh, then it's, it decides that's a, a, um, a binary zero, uh, and if it's it's uh, two if it's like a two length long period, then it decides that's a, a binary one. Um, so it gets the input of the GPIO pin, decides if the level is different from the last time. If it is, then it decides how long how long it was uh, different for, and if it was too short a period, then it decides that's noise. And in this infrared uh, scenario, you potentially could get could get noise, but it's very unlikely. Um, and it it starts off at the very beginning. It has to have a start bit, and in that start bit, it decides how long. So it does like auto bode rate calculations. Really, it just it decides how on how long that start bit is as to as to be the actual periods of the the short period. So like a binary zero. Uh, and after the start bit, it just decides uh, what the period is. And it sets the uh, flag to start flag bit flag to false. So it's not then looking for a start bit after that. And for all the bits after that, it decides the length of them. Uh, and it just adds, depending on how it, uh, whether it was a one or a zero, it adds that to the current byte, or and it, or if it's at the end of a byte, if it, if it needs a new byte, then it appends the new byte to the data. So at the very start, it will append a byte, and then after every each, if, after every eight bits, it will append another byte, uh, uh, and then it adds the bit to the current byte. And it does that until it's uh, received all the data. And then it decides if the period that it's waited between uh, levels changing is longer than an end period. It decides that's the end of the data. Uh, and after that, it just uh, it comes through uh, and decides if it does validity checks. So it decides if the packet signature is correct or not. It will say it was an invalid packet uh, signature if it's not the not the right one. Ignore the data. Uh, it checks the data length. Checks the uh, checksum on the received packet, and if it's not a valid checksum, it says it's not a valid checksum. But if it is valid, then it decrypt, decrypts the data, uh, and it just then will write the data out onto the display so you can see it. Uh, and after that, um, because that's the end of that message, it it clears out the uh, packet structure, data structure, so it's ready to receive another packet of data.